y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the Spirit and the truth. I love the old church That old brother, song. pick up that old hymn book and Singing you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, folks start patting the feet, clapping their hands and all of a sudden, he break off in a song, something like this. Uh, as I work on the, 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 the foundation of the background of the sermon, I explained that this was a church that had stopped working and had began to fight one another, began to argue amongst one another, began to do nothing. Uh, that Paul writes this letter because they believe that according to his first letter, that Jesus Christ the Son of God was coming back any day now. There was no need to do anything but wait for his return uh, for it is all over. We might as well give up. And that's a, a, a sad state to be in because uh, you ought to work as long as you have breath in your body. Uh, every person here ought to stay on the, the bloodstained battlefield, that banner of Christ, until God calls you home. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 10, that we will remain faithful even if this work caused our death. But they had sat down. They had, they had begun to relax and feel like the job was over. Christ was on his way. And when you are not busy for Christ, you'll be busy for someone else. Mm -hmm. We went over all the list of things that was happening in the church. And I thought to myself for a minute this morning, wouldn't it be interesting just to be a fly on the wall to see what a worship service looked like with folk? Who have stopped worship. Uh -huh. Folk who had said to themselves, it's all over, we have no hope, Christ is coming back. Uh, he will be back any day now. Now, it seemed to me that you would be really trying to get your life together if you believed that Christ was coming back. Amen. Amen. If you thought that tomorrow was the last day on earth and Christ was coming back, it seemed like that if you were ever going to have a visit, that's the Sunday. That's the sign you have a visit. Amen. Right. If you were ever going to feed somebody, it seemed like that's when you would, you would feed somebody. If you were ever going to worship God, if this was the last Sunday, and time would be no more on tomorrow. We knew that. Uh, we knew that. How many of you praise God like you've never praised him before? Amen. Amen. And we ought to live our lives like Christ is coming back again. But the problem is some folk don't believe he's coming back again. Some folk have a lie on his return. Some folk have taught in the eschatological view uh, in, in the return of Christ, in the end time uh, of the return of Christ, that Christ is going to come back again and set up a throne in Jerusalem. Uh, David's throne, he would reign for a thousand years. The Bible does not teach that. In fact, in Paul's first letter, he says that he's coming back again with flame and fire and, and, and angels with him taking vengeance on them who know not the Lord. He, He's coming back again, church. He's coming back again. And every I shall see him. Now, according to some men's teaching, he's going to come back secretly, and all of a sudden there's going to be a rapture, and then uh, time will be no more for some, but for us we'll get a second chance. And if you listen to them, they get more crazy. They say some of you will get the mark of the beast, 666, branded on your head, and, uh, and if you do right, God's going to allow you into heaven. Now, God's word don't teach that. Amen. Delusional teaching teach that. And the fastest way to lose your soul is to go astray with delusional teaching versus what Christ teach. Amen. And so, so, the, the, so, so Paul is writing to a church who had, that has been infiltrated with men who are teaching things that are simply not true. And the church... Uh, is, is responded, some people have responded, and and have, have now begun to fight one another, to stop working, to, to reach a state of mind that this world is in. Remember, we've had uh, atheists get up and say the end of the world is coming soon. We've had uh, 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 oral robbers predict the end of the world. The Jehovah's Witnesses have predicted the end of the world as a direct result of folk who are supposed to be religious, <laughs> lying about when Christ is coming back. Folk have become as Gnostic. Folk say I'm not religious no more. Folk don't believe because it just seems like time be going on and on, and church folk don't have it right. But God, God fixed this a long time ago. God said in his word in the book of Matthew chapter 24, he said that the day and the hour of my return, no man know it. Uh -huh. Not even the angels in heaven. And so and I don't care what somebody tells you about the return of Christ, how 
how spooky they make it seem, you better hold on to God's word. And you better understand that our job is not to think that he's coming back, but to live our life like he's coming back. Let me say that again. I'm not about when he's coming back, but I'm worried about living my life like he's coming back. I'm not worried about when he's coming back, but I want to worship him like he's coming back. Y'all are saying that man, folk that know he's coming back right now got their mind on the word of God. Folk that know he's coming back, they sung praises and hymns and spiritual songs of Ephesians 5 and verse 19, Colossians 3, 16, like they knew God is coming back again. And I don't know about you, but when he gets back, oh, glory, hallelujah, am I right about it? Amen. No more lying, no more dying, no more tears, no more backstabbing, me and sister, they war no more. Oh, when he gets back, glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Amen. But because we uh, seem to be trying to count uh, when he's coming back, and so live my life like he's coming back, we have become distanced to the word of God. And we have created, created a delusional state of mind that if I can just get right this deathbed confession thought, if I can get right right before I get ready to go back, then I'll be all right when he gets back. Well, the devil is a lie, the truth is not even right about it. But the way you live on this side is the way you're going to get up. The Bible says in John 8, verse number 21, that if you die in your sin, where I am, you cannot come. Amen. If you die in this, say if you sin, because if we sin, we all go to hell. That was amen. amen. If because every one of us did some some y'all did some sin yesterday, don't write about it. If you sin yesterday, can you just raise your hand and say, I sinned yesterday? Tell you now the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 7, if we say we have not sinned, we lie, and the truth is not y'all. Somebody was cussing yesterday. I'm saying, man. But just don't, just don't die like that. Amen. Just don't die like you know you were cussing yesterday. Some of y'all went some places you wasn't supposed to go. Did some stuff you wasn't supposed to do. But praise be to God, He didn't come back yesterday. Am I right about it? And because He didn't come back yesterday, you ought to be shouting, "Thank you, Jesus!" This morning, because He didn't catch you in the very act. You ought to be saying, "Thank you, Jesus," because it means that His grace. And your opportunity for repentance is here this morning in the house of God. Amen. I don't got that. I'm going to be shouting out. Now, here's the problem. We deal with detached theory people or delusional people. There are several definitions that, uh, that are apropos to the text. Number one, a delusional state of mind of minds that go astray from the teachings of Christ. Mentally, it is a mental break from reality. And, 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 and then the world says, well, he got off to a wrong track. Therefore, when I read, uh, 2 Corinthians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 10 or 11, it makes better sense to me. When the Bible says, and for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion, God is not sending them something that will condemn them because he's tricking them into doing something wrong. The Bible says in James chapter 1 that in verse number 13, that let no man say what he sins, he's tempted of God. For God does not tempt me with sin. God will never set you up to sin. No, 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 no. That God, that strong delusion is not the sin and sin in your life. But what God is doing in it, it says, for this God, I'll send you a strong delusion. He is allowing you to think you're right when you're in a delusional state of mind. When you're, when you're in a mental break, when you're in a spiritual funk. God said, you know, I'm not going to make you believe me. you got to say amen. amen. I'm not going to make you love me. Look at the look at the above verse. You know why folks don't praise God like they need to? Because they're not connected to God like they need to. You know why folk tell you don't worship God, don't praise God in the spirit? Because there's not a connection that can praise God. You can't do something you really don't want to do in the first place. Uh -huh. If you know God like I know God and God been good to you, there's no way in the world you can sit up in the house of God and not shout every now and then thanking Jesus. Amen. You can never see a devil praising God. You'll never see a devil shouting amen. You'll never see a demonic spirit giving God the glory. Whenever I'm in the house of God and the spirit of God is struggling to give God glory, I start looking around No, know there's some devils I got to preach to in the house. I say amen. amen. Whenever I'm clapping my head and folks looking, looking at me crazy, I look at that devil and say, devil, amen in the house. I'm going to give him praise. You'll never see a devil praising God. That's the sad thing you're going to see a Christian. Praise God, amen. amen. If anybody, I'll be praising God. The child of God, I'll be praising God. Amen. Had they brought you through? Yep. Had they brought you? Had preachers preach you that he's coming back again? Had God been better than you than you've been yourself? Do you understand that in spite of you, God has still loved you? Amen. God says in Romans chapter 5, while we were yet in sin, he 
that they're already saved. Mm -hmm. They ain't got to worry about it. Simply because they're in the what? Church. In the church. Now the Bible says in the text of this cause, shall God send you a strong delusion that you might believe a lie. And then guess what he's going to do once you believe the lie? Now what's the lie? That I'm all right. Just like what? Just like what? I was at a prayer in church here. Some of y'all will talk back. We're going to be in church for a long time because i got to wake you up. i got to preach the hell out of you because you ain't going to sit up and look at me crazy about that. I'm not going to entertain Amen. I'm going to entertain So I'm, 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 I want some interaction with the crazy. Is that all right? Amen. Can I, can I have some interaction? I'll make sure we're on the same page. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? All right. So, so, so he says that for this call, I'll send you a strong delusion that you might believe a lie. Uh -huh. Now, I, as I've been teaching, I told you the first lie is a false sense of what? Self. Self. Mm -hmm. They are folk who think that what and all person know, the Bible said no man knows a man except the spirit of man. You don't know me, and I don't know you. Uh -huh. But guess who knows you? Uh -huh. God. And guess who else knows you? You know you. You know you. You might tell you can fool me, but you you know who you are. You know what you're about right now while I'm preaching. You know what's going. I don't know what's going through your mind, but you know what's going through your mind. Amen. And I don't know if you're receiving this word, but you know if you push the word out, you know right now some of you have just decided I'm not even listening to that stuff. And you think that's all right, and you convince yourself that that's how you can worship God. Have you ever thought about going to hell? Mm -hmm. I told you that, but two of you going straight to hell. Mm -hmm. Two straight to hell. You think it's all right to sit in the house of God and block out the word of God. Mm -hmm. And you come up with some reasons that it's okay to just block out the word of God. Now, I know you read John 12, 48. He that heareth these words of mine and receiveth them. I have one to judge him, but he that rejected my word, the same words, I shall judge him in the end time. See, when you're dealing with a demonic spirit, the demonic spirit hates the word of God. And when God had to deal with the devil himself, God would say that it is written. And whenever the word of God is preached, God says in the word in John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice. Whenever I hear the word of God, I don't care who it is. When I hear the word of God, I get happy inside because I love the word of God. Amen. Whenever I hear the word of God, I don't spend my time talking about, is he talking about me? Who is he talking about? I want to get a word from God. Is, is there any? Is there any? Is there any now in Gilead? Am I right about it? Is there any healing? Is there any bomb in Gilead? Y'all know what Is there any healing in what's being preached? Is there anything that happened today? I'm facing a rough week this week. In Gilead. But devils hate the word of God. It's boring to them. Frustrating to them. But here's the thing. God says, hmm. Let's look at the verse. Let's go back to the text. Because before he said that, he said something very interesting. Look at verse number 10. For with all deceivableness and unrighteousness, where is it? In them that perish. In, in them. Now, I know one has got to die. I want you to see this because this will help launch the sermon. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness, where is it? In, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a composition. So, so it's in what? Okay. When you hear the word of God, if you're full of, if you deceive yourself, how, where is there room for the word of God? How many of you sit here right now? that fools yourself that you are right just like you are. How many of you are sitting here right now mad as hell at God for having the nerve to wake you up and tell you through the man of God to get your life right? How many of you are sitting here right now wrestling with the word of God finding everything you can do to distract you from receiving the word of God? The Bible is, with all the sinners and the righteousness in them, they what? They perish. Now watch this. Because they receive not what? The love, the love of what? The truth. Of the truth. What truth? The word. By word is 
truth. And when I struggle receiving the word, if, if, this, if, if I get into a mental fight receiving the word of God, the problem is not the preaching. The problem is what's going on where? In my delusional mind. Now, why is this going on in my mind? Well, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 4, that if our gospel be he. Now, remember, the first verse said they're already in a perishable state. Some, I told you, two of you going to hell. I know you going to hell. Y'all look at me funny again. Y'all know what I did last week. Don't be set in trouble. Don't let your conscience get you in trouble because I'm not even talking to anybody here. I'm talking to those that watch it on Facebook. Let me help so you, you can focus on the sermon. Two of you going straight to hell. I, I don't know who you are because I know these two are going to hell. But he said something that's very interesting. He said, if the gospel be hid, it's hidden them, they are lost. Now, watch this. They're, they're lost. Not going to the house, they're lost. There's some folk not going to go there. There's some folk already on their way to hell, right here. Right here. If the gospel hid them that are lost, there's some folk that are in a lost state right now, according to God's word. Then the, then the text says, they're full of all deceitfulness and unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now watch this. If our gospel, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, if our gospel is hidden, it's hidden them that are lost. Now why are they lost? Now in this text it says, because they don't love the truth. How many of you miss Bible class like it's not, like, like it's just a skip and a part? How many, how many of you, even, even especially uptown, you can just get on the phone and come to Bible class and you still can't get on the phone? All right. How many of you sitting right now calling yourself a Christian and you sitting right now and can't just pick up a phone and listen to a Bible class? That they don't love the truth and it causes a reaction from God. I need you to see this because when you don't love the truth, it causes a response from God. Because God is never going to make you love Him. God is never going to make you receive His word. God's never going to make you study. I don't, I don't, I don't, if you've got a preacher or an elder, anybody trying to make you do something, that's not how God works. God don't work that way. It's going show you the text how He works. I'm show you how He works. And you stick with the Bible, you'll understand God. That's why I love the Lord, because God don't force Himself on nobody. God said, You're going to love me, and I'm going to love you based on what we are in our relationship, or you can do what you want to do. You not knock yourself out. But I've got something for those that love me, and I've got something for those that don't love me. But the choice is yours. All right? Second chapter 4, verse number 4. And whom the God of this world hath blinded. Uh, and whom the what? The Lord, the God of this the world. The God, little G, mm -hmm. of this world. Has blinded. Has blinded. The, the minds of them the which mind believe the not. The minds of believe not. That's the light of the Lord. has got a light. You know why you know why it's you know hard to hear this one church? Because you're struggling with the word of God. And your only avenue is to fuss at me for preaching that there's just one church. Mm -hmm. But there's still this one. You know why you sit here right now? It's because there's a devil by you. And that devil spends his time in your ear telling you stuff contrary to God's word. Now the word delusional in the Greek and the Latin means to go astray from. It means to wander from. It means to move from. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 that the God of this world, he causes you to move or he blinds you so you can't receive or get close to the word of God. Stay with me because I'm trying to show you something that's happening right now. You, you, when, you, when you're sitting and listening to when they were in this church in the Bible and they were listening to these men preach false doctrine concerning the return of Christ, when you allow T.D. J's crept on dollar and all the men to preach the rapture theory, they were pushing you afar from God's word. And the Bible says that when we, when we do so, that we pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ, which means to blame something that's alongside of what God has said. And when you bring something alongside of what God has said, it becomes problematic for you because now you've gone out of the way of Christ and in the way of men, and God's not going to share us with anybody. Now, what I want you to see very quickly. The reason that I'm struggling with God's word and I'm not receiving God's word is because there is no space in my heart for God's word. Satan has put an enemy in your life that spends his time talking about what somebody do wrong, that's the busy body in the text, talking about what you think about other people, what you like, what you don't like, so you don't hear the word of God. What you need to do is hear that engrafted word, which is able to build up your save your soul and build your inheritance on the other side. When you got a devil in your ear, he will always speak against the people of God, the man of God, and the work of God. Amen. 
Most folk will make decisions concerning the church, not because the word God changed, but because somebody in their ear influenced them to change. The Bible says, whom the gods of this world has done what? He has blinded the hearts, lest they shall receive or see the glorious gospel of, of Jesus Christ and be saved. The sense of a false sense of self is that person, according to James 1 and verse 24, who looks into of the word of God and sees and says, how many of you been sitting down reading God's word? I know I have. Reading God's word and felt convicted in the spirit. Know that the word of God is speaking directly to you and found some way to get up and turn your head like you just didn't read that. Mm -hmm. Thought I'd say amen. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest with yourself. How many, after right now when I'm preaching, how many feel he's talking directly to me? You ought to be saying, thank you, Jesus. Not, I don't want to hear that stuff. The devil is working on you. Y'all ought to say amen. Yeah. 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 Every Sunday after Sunday while I'm preaching, I see expressions on people's face because the word of God goes out cutting and going on too, but back and forth. And I see the hatred of God in people's faces. This I don't want to receive God's word. No, oh, they're not receive God. Where they try to reject this man. Let me tell you something. You better, you better, you better learn. I'm, I'm not a part of your salvation plan. God is. Amen. God is. And every word that preaches is truth. And when, when God's word is preached, you ought to receive God's word that's able to save your soul. That's why the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 7, it's something that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Whenever God's word is preached, it attacks the sense of self-confidence that I'm saying, like and listen to James chapter 1, verse 24. He said, for, it's, it's, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forget what man of man he is he was. You know one thing I'm very careful to do it. I'm very careful looking at somebody and acting like I'm better than them. Because every time I look in the word of God, I realize I got a whole lot of work to do. I'll say amen. I don't need you to tell me what kind of work I need to do. The Bible tells me the work I need to do. But I need to make sure I ain't trying to tell you how to do your work. How about you do your work and I do my work. We both see God face and peace. Am I right about it? Don't you go to hell trying to do my work. Do your own work. Am I right about it? I'll say amen. But he didn't look at the, to the practical law of liberty. And look at it and then go in and forget that why are you talking about somebody else? You just as bad yourself. Therefore, when we look at a false sense of selfness, a uh, uh, self, we find that we, we lack things in our life. We lack the ability to be spiritually attentive to the Word of God. We're told over and over and over in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14 or 14 and 12, that is, that we are the same with the Spirit and with the understanding. Pray with our spirit and with the understanding. Am I right about it? 